I would say a song that was both very much in my comfort zone and very much outside the band's normal comfort zone was uh, Damnation Flame, the first single. So I had uh, early on in 2021, I wrote like um, l- wrote like a little intro, which was you know kind of amaranthish and you know not so different. Elise came over maybe half a year later when we started to work, or maybe even one year later when we started to to work more for real on the songs and. Uh, she started to sing these, you know, really dramatic vocal lines, very theatrical. And I had to kind of back that up with some symphonic stuff. So uh, as the song was coming out more and more symphonic, I really like to write symphonic music. I do it a lot, you know, for other bands, other projects, for, you know, just for my own entertainment. And I started a lot of compositions. So for me, this is second nature. But uh, we kind of, or I kind of told myself early on with the band to give it a clear profile that it shouldn't be any symphonic elements because it's not a symphonic metal band, but it's now album number seven. We can test it and see how does it fit within, you know, the Amaran style if we make something much more dramatic and th- theatrical and we can make a, you know, kick-ass vampire video to go with it and everybody will be like, you know, totally surprised what's going on here. This is not what we expected. So I think that's good also, like um, Amaranth is it's a, key, a band that is kind of easy to define in your head, even if it's not easy to put a label on it. So you kind of know what to expect. It's going to be this up-tempo, dancey, kind of happy metal. And then we release something like Damnation Flame, which is kind of in some ways the opposite to it. So uh, that was with, uh, outside of the band's comfort zone. And people were a little bit you know, taken aback by it. But it's, it's already kind of... Uh, you know, after six, seven months playing it live a bunch of times, it already feels like like a classic in the set. As a band, you've always been somewhat uh, concise songwriters. You don't linger uh, in songs for 10 minutes or, or something. So it, it still fits within the Amaranth structure, if that makes sense, the, the symphonic elements. They don't go on too long. Was that difficult to figure out how to balance uh, those symphonic elements? Um, both yes and no, because in terms of how it fit in, it fit in really naturally. And there wasn't too much tinkering with making the, you know, symphonic sounds uh, work within the Amaranth context. But obviously, as soon as you start to go more symphonic, it kind of lends itself to uh, to stray a little bit and, you know, go on for a little bit longer by the very nature of the, the music itself. And I think that quite early on when working on Damnation and Flame or Breaking the Waves, I told myself that, okay, okay. Here comes this big, uh, like, C part where there is more orchestra and some growls and whatever. But let's keep it to that. Let's not have it drag out for two, three more minutes, because it's just the way that Amon songs operate. Like in other, for other bands, I love to write, uh, you know, fourteen-minute songs, drag it out a lot, and you know, uh, develop the themes and all these things. But Amon songs, it's kind of like the concept is telling you that it needs to be short and sweet. It needs to contain a lot of parts, be kind of very energetic and very overwhelming because that's kind of what the concept is. 